Вот. Okay, the next example on that um, lamp sheet is parts. And parts are less frequently used in terms of making solutions, but they are. And so I, I gave an example here of a solution that is a 3 to 2 to 1 of ethylene pore form and isoamyl alcohol. So this would be three parts of ethylene plus two parts four form plus one part isoamyl alcohol. Alright, so you have three parts plus two parts plus one part, so you're going to have a total of six parts. Um, but they'll be in that ratio of three to two to one. So if you're doing it, you could say three parts. If you're doing it, you could do 30 mils of ethylene, 20 mils of chloroform, and 10 mils of isoamyl alcohol. So you have a total of 60 mils. You know, if you, know, if you could do it 60 mils, 40 mils, and 20 mils. You can do it in any final volume that you want, but at the um, end of the addition, they're going to be at that ratio, 3 to 2 to 1. Right? So um, in this case, if our total is 6, 3 out of 6 would be ethylene, Two of the six would be um, chloroform, and one um, of the six um, would be um, the isoamyl alcohol. So if it's parts, it will be written like this, and it's just like three parts plus two parts plus one part. Um, the next topic that I'm going to put here Right, is what we'll call multiple solutes. Right, so this is kind of a different topic. It's not just about concentration of one thing. Um, because many, many times in the laboratory, you know, we work with a lot of buffer solutions we want that are made up of multiple solutes. So it's not just like salt and water, or sodium hydroxide and water. It's actually a mixture of things um, in water. Um, so usually when you're making a solution of multiple solutes, that you have some protocol you're following, some I'll call a recipe, some recipe that you're following. And um, you know, I'm going to give you just three examples, and there could be a lot of examples, but I'm going to give you kind of three examples um, um, a kind of recipe that you may come upon. Um, so here's your recipe. One molar magnesium chloride, 0.4% thymidine, and 20% glucose. Now to make this solution, you would have to have three individual solutions made up that you're going to add together. So you'll have your one molar magnesium chloride, so you'd have to make that up. You'd have to make up 0.4% thymidine and a solution of 20% glucose. So those would be kind of your stocks. Then you would have to mix them. So you'd have 5 mils of the one molar magnesium chloride, 10 mils of the thymidine, 
and 25 mils of that. So you would just add those together, ultimately you'd have 40 mils of solution. So this recipe just tells you what you're going to mix together, but it requires that you make up the individual components there. Um, uh, I have here a recipe for phosphate buffered saline. Now, if you were to Google phosphate buffered saline, you could find a lot of different recipes for phosphate buffered saline because they're different. Uh, uh, you know, variations um, on that. But this is kind of a simple um, recipe, and we're going to say that it has sodium chloride, because that, if it needs to be saline, we're going to have some um, uh, sodium phosphate and some potassium phosphate, right? and it's going to say 0 0.2 gram, 0.15, and let me try to not have two decimal points here, 1.15 1, 1 grams, and 0 0.2 my bad, this is 7.5 grams of sodium chloride, 1.15 gram of sodium phosphate, and 0 0.2 grams of potassium phosphate, and it says bring to volume 1 liter. So to make this solution, you would find these um, materials um, and weigh out those individual components and dissolve them and then bring them to volume of one liter. Now, quite often when you make up a biological solution, it may specify a pH. So, um, as part of the before you're bringing it to your volume, your final volume, you'll have to adjust the pH to the desired um, pH. So there's an additional step. Um, um, say, for instance, you may sit request that this pH be pH, say, 7.4. Okay. So after you dissolve these in your less than one liter, you would take them to the pH meter, adjust your pH to 7.4, and finish bringing them to volume of one liter. Because either the acid or base that you need to add to adjust your pH is going to uh, add to your volume somewhat. Okay. So another recipe. I can try this again. Mm -hmm. So this recipe tells you what your final concentration of each of the components is in your final solution. So you know you decide what volume that you're going to make, find the masses of your um, whoops, TRIS or your EDTA. So you say if I were wanting to make, say, a liter of uh, this TRIS EDTA SDS buffer, I would say, okay, I'd have to find the weight, the molecular weight of TRIS, and decide what a tenth of a mole of that was to make it a tenth 
or molar. I'd have to find the, um, the weight of EDTA and figure out the how much that was for hundredth of a mole of that in a liter. And for SDS at 1%, there would be a gram whoops, per 100 mil. So if I were doing a liter, it would be 10 grams. So once you sort out what volume you desire, then you weigh out the appropriate weights of the individual components to give you the, that concentration. So, um, um, you know, that is a bit more work than if the recipe just says go get this and weigh it out. You know, um, this recipe, you're going to have to, um, you know, individual. So it's, you know, if I were just making point one molar tris, then I would have to figure the, the amount of weight to give me a tenth of a mole. Uh, the point is that I'm making this multiple solute um, solution, then I have to do that for each of the components. And then again, what's the result? Always remember that ultimately the final at the brain completer, final volume, dissolve them. Uh, um, um, because some things, particularly even like EDTA, can often be very slow to go in solution. So you have to make sure that you give them time to dissolve in less than the final volume and then bring them to the final volume. Okay, the last little example I'm going to talk about in this video um, is um, um, down on sort of the close to the bottom of your page three of your solutions lab. Um, and it's talking about stock solutions. And it says that biologists often use highly concentrated stock solutions uh, as a way of making up solutions pretty frequently. So if it's something that you're using a lot and it's something that you can make up as a concentrate and then just dilute it um, from your stock when you're ready to use it, then it's a kind of a time saver. Um, and so we talk about the stock and then we talk about the working solution. Solution or the working strength. And the stock solution is the concentrate. All right. And so an equation that we use that you've probably seen before is our V1C1. V2 times C2, where the volume times the concentration of one solution is equal to the volume and concentration of the other. So if we substitute for these ones with S, so the volume of the stock times the concentration of the stock is equal to the volume of the diluted working strength times the concentration of the diluted um, working strength. So uh, uh, an example here, which says, how would you make 400 mLs of a 1.5 molar NaCl solution? And again, we're going to assume this is aqueous, so that we're going to be using water as the solvent, and that that's where our stock is uh, made. Oh, I didn't uh, solution from a 5.0 molar stock. Okay, how would you make 400 mils of a 1.5 molar sodium chloride solution from a 0 0.50 molar sodium chloride stock solution? So, here, so th this is the question that we're looking for. What is the volume of the stock that we need? We know the concentration 
of the stock is five molar is equal to, you know, the volume, 400 mils of our, let's say this is our VD times our concentration, D is 1.5. molar. So, right, so your volume of your stock is equal to 400 mils times 1.5 molar over 9.0 molar. The molar units cancel out, so you have 400 mils times 1.5 5 divided by 5, so that is equal to 400 ml times 0 0.3, so that's equal to 120 ml of stock. All right, then brought the volume of 400 ml. All right, so V1C1 um, equals V2C2. In this case, the unknown that we were asking was what volume of the stock, and that's usually with a with stock. The, the question that you're going to be asking is what is the volume of the stock that you're going to need? All right, and in this case, like I say, we had a 5 molar stock, and we're wanting to make 400 mils of a 1.5 molar. All right, so... This is like those proportions you've been working, but in this case, you just run to both sides by the 5 molar, 400 mils times 0 0.3 is 120 mils of your stock, okay? And then it told you you're wanting to make 400 mils, so that's the final bring to volume. So, Thanks for watching the solution video, going through these problems. Um, there are um, a number of sample problems in the text and on the lab sheet. Uh, and, um, you know, work on those. And the, in the actual, in the lab exercise, you're going to be actually making up um, You'll be given recipes, and you'll be actually making up some solutions. And let's say, don't take this lightly. This, you know, making solutions, and as I said in the previous video, making dilutions are a foundational, basic skill that the employers um, are going to expect you to to know. You know, kind of as part of you know, it had, so that it has become part of your DNA. You know, by the time you leave the program. You know, you won't hesitate when someone starts talking about recipes or concentrations or molarities and percent solutions and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I just keep saying it, you know, work problems, do examples until you feel comfortable uh, with it because it's a key skill. So, once again, thanks for listening and um, till next time.